Tonight, we are ready to make history. <laughs> You're the worst. Daniel with Spotlight, and today we're putting the spotlight on history. History is a brand spanking new, state-of-the-art, 2,500 person live music and entertainment venue. It's located in the east end of the city in the beaches area near Woodbine Park and Ashbridge's Bay. It took about three years or so to build because of some delays due to the pandemic, but this place is brand new. I mean, it opened November 7th, 2021. Like the paint's still dry and it's so new. Now, as a Torontonian, what's even cooler is that our very own Drake helped collaborate with Live Nation to actually create this venue. Now, obviously we have no choice as to what venue these events take place, but I've still got to ask the question, is this spot right for you? Side note, I'm actually really buzzing too because this is the first concert I'm going to since this whole pandemic started. Like the last show I was actually at was when Toflo was here in February 2020. And as someone who used to go to a lot of concerts, I'm really, really excited to finally get back out there. Anyway, my friends are on their way, so I should probably start getting myself ready. Okay, my friends are in the other room. The Uber just arrived. Let's go check out the venue.
right, guys. Just got home from the show. Super exhausted. I was planning on giving you my, uh, you know, my final thoughts, my review for tonight. But uh, honestly, we're just gonna get to bed. So let's talk tomorrow. And uh, yeah, we'll talk then. Good night. Let's talk about history. So we didn't get home last night till, let's say about a little after 11.30. Um, now I'm up at 5.30 every morning to get to the office for seven. So it was a little bit later than I would have liked to have gotten home. Um, as I mentioned before, it's been a while since we've gone to concerts and everything. So, um, yeah, I'm not used to that. So this morning was uh, was a rough one. So uh, anyway, bear with me. You are on the way to the office with me right now. So yeah, anyway, hopefully the traffic's not too bad and hopefully you don't hear me swear too much. Anyway, getting to history. Honestly, I don't really have anything bad to say about it. Um, it was a great venue, um, brand new as I mentioned. So it was really, really great to see just something new in the city that can be that we can all be excited about just because it has been so long you know we've been stuck in this this pandemic for so long there's been so much uh you know craziness going on it was nice to actually get out feel a bit normal and you know go to a concert um we did see churches which uh i'm not going to get touch on too much because this is more about the actual venue itself and not so much about uh the show um it was my second time seeing churches i've seen them a couple of years ago at uh, Rebel in Toronto. Um, anyway, yeah, they were phenomenal, needless to say, but uh, that's not what this is about. The venue itself. So, <clears throat> we got there a little bit late. The doors opened at seven, show started at eight for the opener, and churches were supposed to go on at 9.15. We did get there a little bit late, um, which maybe worked in our favor because we didn't, we weren't stuck in a big, big lineup. Um, we did have to line up. They checked our COVID vaccines. Um, that little, you know, they checked to make sure we had our vaccination. They checked our IDs, they checked our tickets, just gave us a stamp and uh, in we went. So we booked general admission in August to the concert. Um, when we got there, <coughs> sorry, we booked those two options when we booked our, 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 our tickets. It was the main floor and the mezzanine. Both were the same price. Um, at the time, things weren't 100% open. So we thought, you know what, let's play it safe. We'll stick with the mezzanine. And uh, at least that way, if you know we're not maybe gonna be around as many people we're not gonna have to get you know super close to the stage we'll be able to see everything fairly comfortably and uh you know we're a little bit higher up etc etc the price was the same anyway when we got in there i was really surprised to see that there were a lot of seats and tables so i wasn't sure you know how that worked if you just could just if you saw a table you could just sit down Apparently not. So I asked one of the people working there, and you know everybody was super friendly and, and helpful and everything. So no no issues there. But <clears throat> we asked about uh, the table. We saw a table there, so I said, "How does it work? Can I just sit down here?" Or so the guy says, uh, "You actually have to book the tables." Um, and he says, "There's somebody. There's a girl with a you know walking around with an iPad. Uh, I'll I'll send her your way. To see if there's any tables available." So we said, "Okay." Um, the guy came back shortly afterwards. Said, "You know, really sorry." but the tables are fully booked. And that's fine, I mean, we got there a little bit late. What I didn't quite understand though, was were these seats always an option? Were these tables always an option? Do you buy a general admission ticket and then you get to go to the seat after the fact? Or, you know, you you when you get there, you can book it? Is it for like a first come, first serve basis? I have no idea. That was never mentioned. Um, you know, even as things, as I said, we mentioned, we got our tickets in, in August, even as things started to open up more so, I would have thought if it was an option beforehand, they would have sent a note to, you know, current ticket holders to say, okay, we're all fully, we're at full capacity now, you can book a table, you can book a seat, and, you know, give them the first option because of the fact of, uh, 
you know, we have had our tickets for so long. No emo, as far as I know, was sent, stuff like that. So again, I don't know exactly how it works. We'll have to look into that for the next time uh, to see, you know, how, how exactly these uh, these tables, the seats, everything work. We still were able to see, we went to the side, as you can see from some of the clips, we went to the side there. Um, so we were, we were still able to see everything fine. There was no issues with, with sight. Um, yeah, uh, the view was great. The, the lighting was really cool. The sound was really good. You know, they tooted themselves as being state of the art. I don't know how much I saw, or at least felt, was state-of-the-art. It seemed like a pretty standard concert venue, just, as I said, very new, very clean, which was great. Um, you know, the bathrooms, for example, you can tell were, uh, were cleaned fairly regularly, I would imagine. Yeah, they were just, yeah, very new. The thing I thought was a bit interesting about the bathrooms, I'm not sure if they're all the same or not, but uh, the ones, at least on the mezzanine, there was a separate entrance for men and a separate entrance for women. Um, and uh, they say there was two, as you maybe saw, there was two guys and two girls. That was our group that, last night. And um, yeah, when you, I walked into the men's, my friends walked into the ladies, and you know, suddenly looked, and in the middle there was, uh, that's where everybody sort of, it was like a co-ed sink area. It was very Ally McBeal, very, yeah, very interesting. So, um, that's something I haven't really seen at a uh, venue before. So that was that was neat. It was interesting. Drinks. So my friend bought a round of drinks. She bought us doubles, which was really cool of her. Uh, thanks, Kat. She said she spent. Uh, I think for the doubles, they said there was a, there was a discount for doubles. It was like a five percent discount or something like that. So she paid. I think she said she paid about eighty-eight dollars plus tip for four uh, four doubles. So. That's probably pretty standard for drinks these days. I mean, it is expensive to go out for drinks nowadays and go into any bar or any club or whatever the case is, or any restaurant really. You're gonna spend a lot on drinks. It's no, no longer you really gonna find those $5 drinks unless you find like a happy hour deal or something somewhere. So that is pretty standard. A little expensive, yes, but probably pretty standard these days. Um, if you do want to, you know, if you are the type of person who likes to have maybe a few drinks before a show, maybe consider drinking a drink or two at home before you go. Obviously, make sure you take public transit or, you know, ride share program or something like that. Um, speaking of public transit, um, I, I, I don't know for sure. My friend told me that they uh, actually have a very, they're on, they're on, where they're located is actually very convenient to get to uh, by public transit, whether it's on the, on the TTC. Um, so that's good to know. Uh, and if you are planning on driving, as I mentioned, it's a 2,500 capacity uh, venue. And um, it was like, I think a parking lot that could fit something like 300 cars, which for a small venue like that, that's pretty unheard of and pretty cool. So yeah, good to know that there's uh, there is parking available. I didn't see it, but I'm told uh, it was likely a green pee, like one that you sort of pay by the, uh, the hour or whatever the case is. I touched on the bathrooms a little bit as well. One thing I thought that was kind of cool was when you were actually were in the washroom, um, you could still hear the music perfectly. You know, it wasn't that uh, sort of echoed or, or you know, from a distance kind of situation. You could hear the music really clearly, really, really well. So that was that was a nice touch. If you did have to sneak away for a second or whatever, that was uh, that was cool. No major complaints really. Uh, the one thing I would say, personally, um, I live in the West End and the venue is in the East End. So for me, it was a little bit more East than I would typically travel or like to travel, at least to go to a show. Um, but you know, that's just the nature of the beast. Um, you know, you, you take what you can get, I guess. So one thing right off the bat that uh, I would like to mention as well, a little bit of trivia. I actually used to be in uh, bands and I used to perform, um, you know, in different uh, venues. And the majority of the venues in Toronto that I have performed at have now been torn down and made into condos. So it is kind of cool to see a new venue in Toronto being built. So yeah, that's a really great thing for music and for entertainment. So yeah, I love that. And you know, it's not a massive, massive venue, but it's a pretty good size. The venue is, as I mentioned, uh, 2,500 people, uh, the capacity. And it was sold out. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't expect it to be that many people there like it was weird I haven't been around that many people inside in a long time um, I had my mask on the whole time 
most people I would say did have their masks on. There were still quite a few people who didn't. Um, you know, I know when you're eating and drinking, obviously you don't have to wear it, but I still felt a little bit at times like, ooh, you know, it was a bit strange. The bars were actually pretty well laid out as well. There was never really a time when uh, you weren't able to get a drink, um, which was cool because uh, they did have a lot of area coverage I guess you could say for the bar so that was really uh, that was nice as well sorry for all these bumps I just realized how bumpy this uh, this, this ride is so yeah that was kind of a, that's a nice touch you don't have to wait too long for a drink the other also the way that they laid out the venue was cool too uh, there's some venues for example like Rebel where it's almost like a very narrow hall that you're watching the show at so you're kind of you can end up being very far back. This was sort of laid out almost like horizontally with the stage, so it wasn't really a bad view, I would say. I'd say pretty much anywhere you stood, at least from, the, from where we, our standpoint, um, was pretty, pretty good. <clears throat> so yeah, pretty good coverage there. Um, I really liked, I did, I did think they did a good job with that. I would be curious to go again to the venue and actually stay on the main level and just, just to see, you know, how different it is, if it is better, if it's, I don't know. I, I'd be curious to check it out though, just to just to know what what it's like from that standpoint as well. So obviously, I got asked the question: Is this spot right for you? As mentioned, you're pretty limited. You have no say over you know where your favorite band or an artist you want to see is performing. So if you want to see the show, then this venue is right for you. Um, that's all there is to it, really. If you uh, if you like the if you, if you like the band or the, the musician or the artist enough, you know, you're going to go and see them wherever they perform. Um, did I like the venue? Yeah, absolutely. It was it was a fine venue. It was, as I said, it was new, it was clean, it was, it was fantastic. Um, my one complaint would be maybe just the distance, at least personally for me. Um, you know, being in the, the west end and the venue being in the east end, it was a little bit of a, a little bit of a trek, but honestly, it wasn't too bad. We were probably in the Uber for about 25 minutes or so. Uh, we split it between four people, so you know it was we paid maybe what like 20 bucks each or so, maybe a little bit less. So it really wasn't that bad, um, all things considered. So um, would I go again? Yeah, absolutely. If there's a band or an artist or s uh, some kind of a show there that I want to see, then uh, yeah, absolutely, I would definitely go again. The quality, the sound, the lighting, the experience was was all it was all good to me. Like I have no complaints. Um, yeah, everything was good. So definitely, uh, I would absolutely check out uh, History again. But what about you guys? Have you guys been to History yet? Have you seen uh, any shows there? Are you, any shows coming up that, uh, that you guys are gonna be checking out in the future? Um, I have nothing booked there currently. I have seen that they do have quite a uh, good lineup of shows coming. So definitely, if there's uh, a performer that you do like, absolutely go check them out, go to History, check out the venue, see what, see what you think. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comments below though if you uh, if you have been to history yet, what your thoughts were, if you're planning on going, who you're seeing. Um, yeah, if you like this video, I would also, you know, once again, apologies for this bumpy ride. Um, but yeah, if you like this video, please like it, please subscribe, uh, you know, keep in touch. We will be posting some new stuff. You know, we're trying to do something kind of different here, uh, you know, checking out cool things in the city, cool things in the, you know, in the province and you know hopefully once things get a little bit better i'll be obviously showing you some more uh, more things going on maybe in the world so anyway uh once again thank you for checking this out thank you for for, for coming to history with me and um yeah we'll see you in the next one bye